Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Hello everyone, it is my favorite video to film every year. This is Cosmo. <laughs> Last week it was Wanda, this week it's Cosmo. He wants to climb up on my lap, but okay. So it's my favorite video to film every year. It's the mid-year book freakout tag and I love this video because it's just a chance to think about all the books that I've loved so far this year. And while my reading year has kind of looked a little bit different, both as far as just like numbers and what I'm reading, I still found some amazing books that have stuck with me that I'm excited to talk about. So the first question is, best book you've read so far? So for me, that I, I had to choose a few, okay? I had to choose a few, but if I can only pick one book, my favorite book I've read this year is Jade Legacy, which is book three in the Greenbone Saga. But all three of these... Thank you. All three of these were amazing reads for me. This is an adult fantasy series. It's more, it feels more like an urban fantasy, even though it's not technically our world. The magic is fueled by Jade. They are warriors. They are uh, sort of like almost Yakuza type of mafia. It is, has strong families. We have morally gray characters with great character arcs that you just love right off the bat pretty much, or sometimes maybe you don't love them right off the bat. I just adore these books so much and I've never done a formal review because when I read these I wasn't really making content, but every time I have the opportunity I talk about them because these books just annihilated me. I loved them so much. I was sobbing by the time I finished Jade Legacy. I was consumed with this whole series. I'm not a binge reader at all. I kind of struggle to finish series, but this is one series that I could not stop thinking about and I just binged one after the other and I love them all. So the first one is Jade City and the second one is Jade War and then the third one, which again, if I have to choose only one favorite book of the year, it's Jade Legacy. It was stunning. It was the perfect ending to this series. Now, as far as the other ones go, I also really enjoyed, I'm going to put some romance in here too, because, you know, it's, it's hard for me to choose just one favorite, especially when that favorite is not a romance, when I typically am, you know, I usually make romance content in all years past, but some of these fantasy books that I have read this year have really hit me hard with the stories they're telling and the character work that they're doing. But I want to include romances too because I've had some that I've really really loved and one of those is Adjacent but Only Just. This is a historical romance. It's so swoony and so romantic and I just love the characters. This has a widower hero and our heroine is matched to be married to his brother so you have a good deal of angst in here and it was just emotional and delightful and I just loved this one so much. Another historical romance that I loved this year is My Season of Scandal by Julianne Long. I adore Julianne Long. I think she is fantastic. I have loved this whole series. This is the Palace of Rogue series, but this book just was so much fun to read. It was a breath of fresh air and I just, I loved the romance. I loved the characters. I highly recommend this book. And then for a fantasy romance, this one is probably, I think this one is probably my second favorite book of the year and it is When the Moon Hatched. I absolutely loved this book. I thought it was amazing. It is not perfect, that's for sure, but it's doing so many unique and beautiful things, and I think it really stands out among the crowd of fantasy romances that oftentimes feel just very derivative and unoriginal, don't have great characters, it feels formulaic. This does not. I feel like she was really striving for something different here, and I think she achieved that, and I just loved the story. I loved the characters. I loved the romance. I adored this book. Okay, so the next question is, what is the best sequel that you have read? So I think that I'm kind of sticking to sequels, sequels. So I think most of the times those are in like fantasy series where you you kind of get the first part of the story but it's not done. Whereas I think in romance a lot of times you just get a different couple. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. So best sequel is Jade War. I thought this was a perfect sequel. I love to see the character growth. I love to see some of the characters kind of backslide. I loved seeing the effects of the decisions they have made. I love this family unit so much. This book was pretty brutal and it really ends in a way that makes you question what is going to happen to these characters. So I loved this one. Another sequel that I really, really loved is um, Glow of the Everflame. So I said I really, really loved this. This one I still gave four stars. 
And this is a fantasy romance series that I am really enjoying. It is a bit derivative, but it's still pretty fun and enjoyable and fast paced, and I am really liking it. I gave book one three stars, book two was definitely an improvement, and so that's why it's in the best sequel, because it was a four star for me. Okay, the next question is a new release that you want to read, but you haven't read yet. So for me, that is The Stranger I Wed by Harper St. George. I really want to get to this one. It's I actually picked up the audio during the Audible sale, and I'm very excited to read this. I want to get to this one soon. Uh, another one is Burn of the Everflame. So this is book four in the, I can't remember what the series is called, but it's the, you know, the covers all kind of look similar. This one comes out July 1st, so I'm very excited about that one. I need to finish book three, which I'm currently reading right now. And then another one I want to read is When Among Crows by Veronica Roth. I have heard really good things about this little novella, and I really love her writing. I loved Divergent. That's actually the only thing I've read from her that series. So I'm really curious to see what this is about, but I know this is based on Slavic folklore, which I really love, so I'm hyped about this one. Okay, and the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Honestly, I haven't done a great job of keeping up with new releases, when they're coming, what is coming, but this is one that I am extremely excited about, and it is The Fury of the Gods by John Gwynn. I love this fantasy series. I think it is so fantastic. It has such good characters and very different. It's based in Norse mythology, and I love it. I love it so freaking much. It has one of my favorite female characters of all time. Like, everybody loves Orca. If they've read the series, she is a mother bent on finding who took her son and dealing them revenge, and I just am like totally here for it. So that one I am extremely hyped about, and I gotta admit I'm not 100% certain of what is coming out in the romance book community. I feel like everything is moving too fast for me, so that one for sure I am very excited about. Okay, so the next question is my biggest disappointment. For me that's definitely A Court This Cruel and Lovely. Honestly this year I haven't had a ton of disappointing reads. I feel like I've been very selective about what I'm reading, and I'm not just reading to read books like I've done in the past. So my numbers are lower, but I'm being more intentional with the books that I'm picking. So this is a fantasy romance that honestly, I was really, really hoping I was gonna love because I had heard really good things about it, but it just was too, you know, when I say fantasy romance can be derivative, this is what I mean. I see way too many books that are written like this where we have, I've seen this heroine a million times, I've seen this hero a million times. Nothing about this was fresh or interesting or taken in a different way. It was insta-lovey in the extreme, it relied on cringy spice, and I just, I didn't like it. It was two stars. It was disappointing because I'd heard people loved it and it was just definitely not for me. So that's my most disappointing read. My biggest surprise, okay, I have two for this. So the biggest surprise overall is The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. Like, I did not know what to expect about this book when I read it. I had heard just that people really, really loved it, and I'd also heard that some people kind of struggled with it. So I was a little curious to see where I would land. I ended up absolutely loving this. This one almost made my favorite book of the year, except for the fact that I really don't think anything is going to de dethrone the Jade the Greenbone Saga. I don't see anything defeating Jade City, Jade War, or Jade Legacy, even though this one is structurally so interesting and unique and just on a craft level it is so well done. And when I say that, I do mean that that is also propelling the story forward because craft without story in fiction is meaningless. So the craft of the writing in here is so excellent at such a high quality. The prose, the perspectives, the point of view, the switching different times, the fantastical elements that are added, the themes, the metaphors, everything in here is so intentional and so clever, and it is layered and deeply nuanced, and it is just incredible. But I did feel a deeper connection with the Greenbone Saga for sure. So this one I think is a little more, definitely more elevated than the Greenbone Saga as far as craft, but the characters of Greenbone Saga, they're never getting out of my heart. So these characters really won me over, but I was mostly just awestruck with how magnificent this book was. So this is a book that absolutely surprised me. I have never read anything like this in my life. Never. And I'm old. <laughs> and I've been reading for my whole life, you know? Like, there are very few times in my life where I wasn't reading something, and uh, I have never in my life read this, anything like this. It was fantastic, so this one surprised the heck out of me. Another one that really surprised me as far as how much I enjoyed it was Project Hail Mary. I freaking loved this book and I was not sure if I was going to. I do like sci-fi a lot, 
but I had heard maybe this went a little too hard on the sci-fi. I felt like it was really solid. It was very easy to understand. Now it does have some tangents of science-y stuff in there, so if you really don't like science that may get boring to you. But again, this is such a strong character-driven book as well, and it has an alien side character in here that I love so much and is probably the whole reason why I love this book named Rocky. Oh my gosh, this book tugged on my heartstrings. It had me fascinated. I could not stop reading it. I loved it and I was really surprised at how much that I loved it. Okay, the next question is... Uh, favorite new author? So for me, that is definitely Fonda Lee. Fonda Lee is my favorite new author. I, I can't even get over how amazing these books are. I love them so freaking much. Anytime an author can really get you to feel so strongly for the characters. I think that is an author that I'm always going to read and that's what she did here. So I really loved her. Another author that I really, really was impressed with, sorry, I'm looking down at my phone to get the name right, is Shelley Parker Chan, who wrote She Who Became the Sun. This is another historical fantasy and I was immensely impressed with this book. Another epic story of war and a girl who assumes the identity of her brother. So people believe that she is a boy and what is happening in their characters' lives as they're trying to survive. And I just was so impressed with this. The writing was beautiful. The story was crafted expertly. I am going to read everything this, this woman writes. Okay, so favorite characters are Hilo from the Greenbone Saga. Hilo is one of the main protagonists. He's one of the siblings and he, I just adore him. I adore him in every way. He's very morally gray. He doesn't always do the right thing, but he tries and his growth and I just like, I love, I love him. I love him so much. He's a great, great, great character. My favorite character is Rocky, of course, from Project Hail Mary. That little alien that looks like kind of a spider. I don't even know what he looks like. Labrador sized spider. I adore him. I adore him. I would go to the ends of the earth for Rocky. He is precious and I love him. And another character that I really liked, I don't know that I would go so far as to call this a favorite, but I really liked this character is Axe Eyes from The Road of Bones. This is a fantasy romance that I haven't mentioned, but I really enjoyed this book and I thought he was a fabulous character. He's sort of like the boss of this gang of warriors who is traveling and our heroine comes in to try and hide from people who are trying to hunt her down and they have a little bit of a connection, but it is very slow to start. So I really liked Axe Eyes a whole lot. Okay, and now we have a book that made me cry. Yes, I'm holding it up again, Jade Legacy. I sobbed my eyes out. I sobbed my eyes out multiple times during this book. And I am not someone who cries a lot when they're reading. I loved it. Another book that made me cry is When the Moon Hatched. So my two favorite books of the year both made me cry. That doesn't always happen, but this book was just so deeply emotional for me in a lot of different ways and I loved it. So this book definitely made me cry. Okay, so now we just have books that made you happy. So one that I already mentioned is My Season of Scandal by Julie Ann Long. This book just made me so happy. I loved it so much. It was so fun. It was so romantic. This is everything that I want in a historical romance. I loved it. I adored it. Y'all need to read it if you haven't yet. Another book that made me so happy is King of Sloth by Anna Huang. Look, I love an Anna Huang book and I wasn't sure if I was gonna love this, but I did. And I just had so much fun reading this and it made me so happy. I loved it. And another book that made me so happy, which may surprise you, is Wild Love by Elsie Silver. I really loved that book. I thought it was super fun. It was very sweet. I loved the characters. I enjoyed the heck out of that and I had a great time reading that. Okay, the next question is favorite book to film adaptation. So obviously House of the Dragon, which has just recently started up. I've only seen episode one, but like, it's so freaking good. And I have read Fire and Blood and I loved the first episode. I think that is just, I'm so excited for the rest of the episodes to come this season. Another one that is a book to screen adaptation that I haven't read the books of, so I don't know if, if I can even say this, but I loved this show is Vera, the BBC uh, mystery drama type of thing. Like we, me, my husband and I watched all 12 seasons of that and we were hooked and I just, I loved it. I loved the characters. I loved the mysteries. I thought it was just good TV and I had so much fun watching that. So much fun watching it with my husband. It was a fun thing to do. Okay, so now the next question is the most beautiful books that I've bought. So I have these, I got the Barnes and Noble editions of Lore Olympus. I honestly have not really been buying special editions at all. So I don't really have anything that is a special edition, but I love 
these Barnes and Noble. I think the Barnes and Noble covers are so much prettier than the original one. So this one is volume five, and then this one just recently came out and it's volume six. And I just love, love, love the Barnes and Noble covers of these. I think they're so much prettier and so much cuter than the originals. So those are my picks for the prettiest books that I've bought this year. And then the last question is books to read by the end of the year. So I have a few. Most of these are books that I either have started, I'm in the middle of, I have an arc for, but these are books I need to read that I haven't yet. Some of them have already come out. One of them is The Problem with Players by Brittany, C by Brittany Cherry. I am currently reading this and I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, Savor It by Tara DeWitt. I did get an arc for this and I did not get it read on time, but I do definitely want to read this and leave a review for it. Another one is The Stranger I Wed by Harper St. George. This is another one I had an arc for and didn't get read on time, so I bought a copy of it and I'm gonna read it myself and leave a review. And then Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed. I have loved what I've read from Ava Reed in the past, and this is another one I have an arc for and I am very excited about it. And the last one is Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wong. So this is another book I have an arc for. This was originally indie published, so maybe you have read it if it has, you know, if you got it when it was indie published, but it is gonna be traditionally published. So I have an arc for that and I am very excited to read that. I've heard great things about it, like really good things. So there you have it. That is my mid-year book freakout tag. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you have made it this far, please tell me, answer one of these questions for me. What's been your favorite book of the year? Your most disappointing book of the year? What are you looking forward to read by the end of the year? Any of those questions? And if you just wanna leave an emoji and let me know you were here, please feel free to leave me anything that is purple. Purple heart, purple flower. I don't know what else is purple on there. And I'll see y'all in my next video.